Hello everyone and welcome to this Python programming demo session. Python is an interpreted high level general purpose programming language. So first of all we need interpreter to execute the code and it's a high level language. It's not a low level language. Third point is it's a general purpose programming language which means we can create any kind of application. It's not a specific to a specific domain. Python can be used to design a website. It can be used to create a desktop application. It can be used to create a game. Even you can create operating system. It is very popular in data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence. And there are so many applications that is built on Python programming. So let's understand how it works. Now here you can see we have different programming language. You can use any programming language, but then how it works. So we write the language which we understand. And to communicate with this machine, we need a programming language. The problem is machine can understand only binary zero and one. And we cannot write the code in zero and one. Then we need a programming language using which we can write the code. So you can use Python, Java, C++, JavaScript or any other language. So let's take the example of this. Now, if we use Python programming, it cannot directly communicate with the machine. First it has, we have to convert to machine language. So it can be done with the help of compiler or interpreter. So Python use interpreter to convert the code, our code to machine language. Some languages are based on compiler. For example here C++. C++ use compiler to convert the code to machine language. Whereas Python use interpreter to convert our code to machine language. So this is the first requirement. We need here an interpreter so that we can write the code and then convert to machine language. Now from where we can download this interpreter? We can get this from the official website. This is the official website python.org. You can open this and go here downloads. Under this you can see for if it is a window operating system, download this one python 3.7. Otherwise if it is Mac you can go here and download it and then install this. So this is an interpreter. Second thing we need an editor where we can write the code. You can use Python shell also to write the code. After installing this Python interpreter, search here Python and you can see here IDLE. This is integrated environment. You can open it. So this is Python shell. Here we can write the code. I'll create a variable with the value 12 b with some value now c just add it and print c now you can see it's working so we can use python shell to write the code but then here uh, if there are so many files organizing the files resources is not that easy so we need an editor there where we can you know handle all the resources all the files Instead of writing in uh, writing the code in Python shell, we use an editor. So which editor you can use? In Google, you can search PyCharm download and open this website. Here's the official website, jetbrains.com. Here you can see for Windows, Mac and Linux. And two options are there, professional and community. This is a free one. So you can go here and download this one, community one and install this. So after installing, you can see this is a PyCharm. Let's see how to create an, a new project. Click here, create new project and specify the name. My first project. If this name is name project is already exists so it will show this here. 
location directory is not empty so i'll just specify some other name here let's give here demo project and if you see this option this is just the path of the interpreter which you can modify suppose you want the old interpreter some other interpreter we can you can always choose that So specify the path here and click here, create. Now it will set up a virtual environment for the project. So click on the project, right click here, new, and you can see Python file here. Let's give a name first. Extension for the Python file is .py. So here you can see. Now here I'll create variable, give some value. Python is dynamic typing, which means we don't have to specify the type here. So what type of value we are going to store? Like in C, C++, Java, if it is integer, we have to specify like this, int, b, then some value. So here we don't have to specify because dynamically it will figure out what value it is storing according to that it will create a type so let's create b and then string string can be in a single or double quote i'll print so if we write in double quotes that become a string that will be printed as it is and uh, this will print the value inside this variable. So to execute this, first thing you have to right click here, run this, and see the value here. Okay, now you can see here. Next time I have to just click here, run. So A is 12, B, C. At the same time, I can print here the type. Let's get the type. So to find the type, type function is there. And inside type, we have to specify the variable name. Same thing I'll do for other variables. Okay, now let's run this again. And see, A is integer type, and B is float type, C is string type. One more thing you can see, a class. It means A, B, C, all are object. So, in Python, everything is an object. What is integer value? Integer value means a whole number. Suppose here, I want to store number of students. So, it will be whole number. I cannot write 12 point something, right? It's a whole number. 5, 6, 10, whatever. Then, these are decimal value. So, let's say it's a price or distance. So many values are in a decimal that is known as float and then string like address uh, it can have a special character here or anything inside double quote so we have different types of uh, value and here abc these are known as variables or container that can store these values so that we can access it so to comment this whole lines select it just use control a and then control slash see this is the comment control slash comment means this this these lines will be ignored by the interpreter now see there is no effect this part is ignored now let's do one thing i'll create a variable a b in one line well and let's give five here a is assigned 12 b is assigned five and in c i'll just add the value a plus b let's print c and see here the result now i can do here different operations a divided by b and see here 2.4 Now, here A, if I use two times here B, 
divide. So how it work? It will discard the decimal value. Okay. So here it is. It was 2.4, right? Now it will it will not store a decimal value. It will store only two. See. So one time is division. Two times means it will divide, but it will discard the decimal value. Interestingly, the type of C will be here. Let's print the type here. It will be integer here. See int. Whereas, if I just use only one time, it will be a decimal value, which is float. Now let's do one thing. A multiply by B. I'll print C. So yeah, it will multiply A into B. But then if I write here two times, then how it works? Then it is A power B. Let me just change it. Now here, two raised to the power five is thirty-two. See here. So there are so many things here we can do. Let's do one thing. I'll take the input from the user. I'll ask the user to enter age. Input. Enter your age. This input is a function that takes input from the user. So here, in take the input and then store in this variable age, and I'm printing it. Run this. Enter your age, some value. Your age is this. But there is a small issue here. When you take input from the user from the keyboard, the type of this is a string, not a decimal, an uh, integer value. So if we try to do some operation on this, like we can divide, multiply, do some other operation, you'll get error. Let's do one thing here. Print the type of this value. This variable. Again, run this. Some value, and see, it is a string. So, by default, input from the keyboard is string. Now we have to typecast it. How to do that? Put inside integer here. Now this will convert the type to integer. Now let me run this again. Again, I'll give value. Now this time it is integer. So because it is integer, it is possible to do some operation. So in this case, I'll write a program. If this age is greater than or equals to eighteen, colon. Now this is condition, conditional statement. I'll on the basis of the age, I'll take some decision. Okay, if age is more than or equals to eighteen, I'll print here. You can vote, but what if this is not true? Then I'll print. You cannot vote. So very simple example here. So, but here in Python we use indentation, space here. See, we don't use here like in other programming language. These are the curly brackets to create a block. So block starts here, it ends here, but in Python we don't use these curly brackets. Then how to create a block? Block is created with the help of tab or indentation. Now you can see here, this is a block. If I have to write any line inside this block, I have to start from here. But if I move to the left here, now the block is not. This is not a part of block. So this way we can create a block here. Two things happen here. First of all, we don't have to write these curly brackets that save a lot of uh, lines and time. Second advantage is user is forced to write neat cl and clean code. User don't have any option. So if suppose you write from here then so you will get error. See indentation expected. So initially you may struggle if you are from another programming background, and uh, if it is the first language, then 
it's good you are you are you are going to follow the best practice this is the way you should be you know, align it properly now let's run this and test okay enter your age 11 you cannot vote again run this okay 34 you can vote so if condition is true execute this block if condition is this condition is false go here and execute this part of block now here is a small issue let me run this again i'll give here very large value let's say 999999 still let's say you can vote you can vote this is not a valid age then how to you know handle this situation here we have two conditions age should be greater than or equals to 18 but at the same time and age should be less than let's assume uh, 125 we know that that is the maximum age so both conditions should be true here age should be more than 18 or equals to 18 at the same time it should be less than 125 satisfy the condition then only user is allowed to vote otherwise you cannot vote let's run this again now let me enter that again this large value and see you cannot vote if it is a valid age then only you can vote so if there are there can be different condition one more condition can be there let's say citizenship so we can check that also so multiple conditions we can check now let's handle one more situation here i'll run this again user type a string so user say nine instead of the number it's a string and see this is an exception value error invalid literal the reason is we are expecting here integer and this is a string so how to handle this now this is something which we cannot figure out at here while writing the code only when we run the code then only this kind of error will come so that can be handled with the exception handling i'll handle it how to handle exception inside try put that code and then accept it can raise here value error okay as I'll store in a variable and then print it let's print invalid inputs so what is try try is a block where we write the code there where we know that exception can be raised and if there is any exception it will raise except has to handle that this block will handle it and here we write the code that we want to execute if there is any exception now let's run this again now if there is no exception no problem but if let's here 10 now see here invalid inputs so program is not terminated and uh, here you can see the error message which we write here now let's to add one more feature here if there is any exception it should ask the user to enter the value again so how to handle that i'll remove this part that can be done with the help of loop loops are used to perform some repetitive task there are some tasks which we repeat right so in that scenario we can uh, use loop here so while because here i don't know how many times i'll use true here true means it is infinite loop while true here we have to write condition while true means it is always true and then whole code i'll put here so this will keep asking but then how to terminate it we must terminate it right now here in python in exception handling 
we have one more block and that is else else part else okay here i'll break it so what is else part here if there is no exception then control will go to else part if there is any exception control will go to accept block so if there is no exception in control will go here and then i'll break the loop but if it is not then again it will ask the user to enter age let's run this again enter your age i'll enter some value string 2 now see invalid inputs but again it because it is infinite loop it control will go here print the error message again control go here again it asks enter your age i'll enter again some string see again it will ask now i'll enter a valid number now it will terminate you can vote so then it will come out of this loop so you can see the output is here on the console now what if i want to write the output on a file so let's add that feature here in this program instead of printing here you can vote i'll open a file let me comment this part so here i'll open a file so with open here specify the name of the file result dot text and i'll open the file for writing mode w as let's say my file so i'll open the file and then specify the name of the file and the mode it's in writing mode and this is the object now using this my file dot write here i can write the message you can vote so if user is allowed if it is the proper age now instead of printing here i'll just come in this part it will open a file if file exists it will open that if it is not then it will create this file and in which mode it is in writing mode then using this object i can use a function write which write this statement now let's run this enter your age here i'll type a string again it lasts the user to enter now this time i'll give proper age 33 now see here. now once we type here you can see this file is created here result dot text i'll open it and see you can vote so this way i am able to write the output onto a file instead of printing here so we can store in a database also it's very simple uh, create a connection create cursor object and then insert in a table there are so many things we can do here uh, anyway this is just a demo session so just trying to explain what are the things we cover and how we cover here so we'll see object oriented programming concept regular expressions and uh, so many other topics